Hey everybody, this video brings us back down into the Cinema Sickness Library because today I have got something really, really awesome to show you. This is something I'm really excited about. A, a literal hidden treasure, if you will. Something I just found in the attic of my house. It was something I knew I had, or at least I was pretty sure I still had. I just didn't know where it was. And today I went up there looking for something completely different and stumbled upon these and I was pretty excited and I'm very excited to um, to share this with you guys today. So let's get down to it. Let's take a look at some really cool hidden treasures I found in the library. Um, this is, again, this is really awesome. So I'm big into to music. I grew up, um, well, I was born in 82, grew up in the 80s into the, the 90s. So by the time like the, I don't know, like right before like Kurt Cobain passed away, I started to really get into music. So I was really big into the alternative rock grunge scene, if you will, the early 90s rock scene. I was big in the bands like Nirvana and Hole and Soul Asylum and um, Soundgarden and Pearl Jam and all, you know, STP, all those bands I got really, really into. But there was something I always noticed about those bands. Every time I would listen to one of their albums, it would always be the um, the really fast, hard songs I would really be attracted to. For instance, on Nirvana's Nevermind, you, if, you, if you're familiar with that album, they have a song called Territorial Pissings. Very fast, very loud, very punk rock sounding song. And that song was my favorite song, maybe of Nirvana, if not that album. I used to listen to that song over and over and over again. Surprise, I did not wear away the cassette tape that I had because I had a, had a cassette tape before I had, um, before I had a CD copy of that uh, back in the day. Surprise, I did not wear down that actual part of the uh, cassette tape because I used to listen to it so much. I was just big into that. So when the whole like punk rock craze happened and bands like Green Day and The Offspring and Rancid started to get kind of popular, I started to kind of gravitate towards that music. And I had friends who were in the punk rock scene, some bands who created punk rock bands. And um, from that, I just really started to get into punk rock music. I still remember my first time ever hearing like a real punk rock band. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I, I mean, it was a band that played only the fast, the fast, loud, crazy songs that I was really enjoying from those other bands. It was just a band playing nothing but that music. I, my mind was blown. I couldn't believe that there were bands out there that existed. And I've heard that from so many other people too, uh, friends and uh, musicians and stuff who, who like heard punk rock for the first time and just who couldn't believe how fast and loud and just how much energy that was behind it. And I really gravitated towards that music. I became a little punk rocker. I was super into punk rock music. I, I, even though I still listen to Green Day, and I mean, uh, Nirvana and all that like alternative music. I was just, I was really big into punk rock music. I did this in the Green Day and stuff like that as well. But one of the great things about the, um, the punk rock scene from that time was it wasn't like the punk rock scene is now or like it was, um, like the, at least it was like in the early 2000s and stuff like that, where it was kind of just a big popular punk rock band. All the kids I, I like who were in the punk rock scene that I would meet, I'd ask like what their favorite bands were. And they'd only name like newer bands. And I'd say, what about like all these other bands? I named bands from like the 80s and the 70s and even the 90s. And they look at me like I had three heads. They're like, who, who are those bands? So apparently at one point, punk rock became very mainstream and you're only into the new, the new cool punk rock bands, the old punk rock stuff. Who listens to that? But not, not in the 90s. The punk rock scene was very much into all punk rock music, whether it was like punk rock music from the 70s, punk rock music from the 80s, newer punk bands from the 90s. It didn't matter. You were into all of it and all the music that like that comprised that. So ska music and hardcore music and just anything that was punk rock related, you were pretty much into. So it was really awesome. Great time to grow up with music and be in the punk scene. And um, I was very much into local punk rock bands. I was friends with a lot of punk, lo local punk rock bands. I started my own local punk rock band. And um, of course, going to local shows, I would buy uh, local punk rock albums. And back in the day, you know, coming across a, a band that had a CD, that was kind of rare. That didn't happen until later on. But what you would what you would always come across were bands given out there or selling their their cassette tapes. And that's what I have here. A bunch of local cassette tapes from back in the uh, like the, the mid to sort of like getting towards the late 90s. So this is pretty awesome. I'm so excited to show this to you guys. Maybe if you're from like the Philadelphia area, maybe you, you remember some of these bands. Leave comments down below if you do. So first up here, this is actually the one non-punk rock thing I have to show you. This is DJ Venom. Uh, are you ready? Look at that pose there. He's so totally not posing. He's, he's really playing. Anyway, um, so the reason why I have this is because I had a friend, I still do have a friend, and he still is a DJ. Um, he goes by Aiden Scott, but back in the day, he used to go by DJ Zero with an X. Um, so he used to play house parties all the time and raves all the time. 
And I used to go with him to these all the time because he was my best friend. And um, that was what he did to hang out. We would always go to these raves and these clubs and whatnot, which is kind of funny because I would go to these clubs with my, you know, bleach blonde, like literally spiked out hair, leather jacket with spikes and pins and patches all over it, bondage pants, boots laced up. I mean, I had combat boots. I was super punk rock. And I would go to these shows with a bunch of kids wearing parachute pants and big, big necklaces with big beads on them and sucking on pacifiers and with their glow sticks. I'd be hanging out with those raver kids. It was really, really weird uh, to be doing that. But I used to go to shows all the time, or not shows, raves or whatever all the time, whatever they called them back in the day. I used to go to these all the time with my friends. And um, I did get into the, that music, not so much the scene, but I got into the music. I, I enjoy house music and, and, and hardcore um, electronic music and like drum and bass and stuff like that. And I believe this was like a hardcore, uh, or I think it was Hard House is what it was called. I think it was a Hard House DJ, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it is. Yeah. Another Hard House banger. It says right there. I was right. Uh, he was a Hard House DJ. Hard House is like house music, but just faster and louder. So anyway, um, pretty awesome. Pretty cool. This was, this is neat. I was pretty excited to, to find this DJ Venom. I think I actually bought this off him. If I'm not mistaken. I remember we were in some club. I think it was a club that had a um, laser tag attached to it for some reason. I, I don't know why I remember that, but um, he was playing there and I bought this off him. So that's cool. That's awesome. That's the one non-punk rock thing I had to show you. So now into the punk. So this is um, Lost and Found. This is their EP Demo 2 from 1997. Look at that. No artwork for this one. That's This is how it came. I remember I actually got this from, uh, I believe, the lead singer. Uh, there was a local um, recording studio. I think it's still here called The Cave uh, in town. And... Um, they were playing there. They were recording something. They invited me down to listen to them play. And they had this, uh, they had their little EP here and he gave me a copy of it. So pretty awesome. They were like a local sort of like punk kind of rock band. They were like a little, a little bit of a mix. Um, good stuff. Pretty awesome. Haven't listened to this in years. Looking forward to, uh, re-listening to that. Then we have Next Time Gadget. By the way, fantastic name for a band. As somebody who grew up watching, um, Inspector Gadget, I'll get you Next Time Gadget. Next time. This is awesome. Great uh, Dr. Claw quote for the name of the band. Uh, this is their three-song tape. Again, no artwork for this. Just This is how it came. This is DIY punk rock. Back in the day, you did not get your stuff pressed. You did not get your stuff mass-produced. Um, I mean, unless you were unless you were big or doing well for yourself, you did not get that done. You would record whether... Sometimes you, would, if you had money, you would pay a little bit of money to go to a, a little local recording studio like The Cave or something like that, and uh, they record a couple songs for you, usually around like three or four songs. That's all you could afford. It'd cost you like a couple hundred dollars to get those songs recorded. They'd give you the master, and you would make your own tapes, uh, like li literally on a cassette tape player. That's what you would do. You, you would copy these. You would copy back and forth from the master. You would make these all night long in your bedroom, go to a show, give them out, or, um, or sell them. So pretty awesome. Next time, guys. I believe they were a punk rock band. I actually played with this band. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but I believe I played with this band. So pretty awesome, pretty cool. I think they were a punk rock band. I don't think they were ska. I think they were punk rock. If you guys know, leave a comment down below. So awesome, very cool. Haven't listened to that in a long time. This is one of the few like non-Philly uh, demos I, or whatever I have. This is actually from uh, The Vamps. They were from Delaware. My friend, I believe his name was Brian, I think. It's a long time ago. He was a he was a punk rock kid. He used to hang out on the boardwalk. My family used to have a beach house in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. We used to go down there all the time. It was my my home away from home. It was my second home when I was a kid. I used to go down there all the time, and I befriended a lot of people who lived down there. I was friends with a lot of the kids who lived down there, and um, he was like the one like really punk rock kid. All, a lot, I had a lot of friends down there. Not many of them were punk rock. He was like the one punk rock kid who I like could could really talk to about punk rock music, and he had a band called The Vamps. Uh, this was his little record um, he, he gave me. Again, I haven't listened to this in so long. Looking forward to, uh, to re-listening to this. Cool logo as well. It's like a, I think it's like a windshield, like a dashboard right there. And this is the Vamps. <laughs> so, again, it's all DIY. Like this, again, look, look, look at the set tape. That, they, they would buy these, they would burn them, or not burn them, but copy them themselves. And then you'd print these out like on a, on a copier. You would just, you would put your, your original down and just copy out, copy after copy after copy, cut them yourself. Put them into the tape yourself. I remember doing that. I'll show you in a minute what I had to do back in the day. So pretty awesome. Pretty cool. So Delaware uh, Punk Rock. I think they were like, located in like Lewis, Delaware, if I'm not mistaken. So pretty awesome. That's cool. Again, I haven't listened to them in a while. I think they were kind of like a, sort of like a goth punk, if that if that makes any sense to you guys. And not goth music, but like sort of this weird mix, like the like um, Misfits and stuff like that. So pretty awesome. Uh, then we have PBS, Pushed by Society. Uh, when Trumpets Fade. Clearly the cassette tape or the case broke at one point because um, I replaced it with something from the wall. Look at that. <laughs> this was not sold in the wall. Who remembers that? The, the wall. But again, look, it's just homemade DIY. They got all their information on the back here. I'm not going to give it away because some of these numbers might still be good. I don't know. There's there's literal 
home phone numbers, home school address or home uh, home addresses. This is before the days of worrying about people coming to kill you or or calling you on the phone and you know pranking you and stuff. I mean, you would give out your home phone number, you would give out your physical home address and say, "Write to us, buy stuff from us, call us if you want to." You know, book us for a show. That's how you did it back in the day. It was things have changed now, unfortunately, but pretty awesome. I was friends with um, Ricky and uh, Derek from this band. Uh, Derek was the uh, the bass player. He used to actually work at the local bar right up the street from me. I don't think he works there anymore. And um, Ricky, I think he passed away, unfortunately. Um, but I remember Ricky had this really interesting way of playing drums. He would get down really low and almost like lay on his drum kit and just play really fast and really hard. It was awesome. Great, great band. They were sort of like a, a hardcore band, but like, you know, late 90s, mid, mid 90s, hardcore, I uh, think like Victory Records from that time. So hard, definitely harder than like a lot of the punk rock being played at the time, but not, not as hard as like hardcore music is nowadays. But so great band. Very cool. That's awesome. Uh, this band was amazing. Local ska band, Dr. Fever. Great, great ska band. Uh, this band was actually really nice. Um, they would always invite us to play shows and stuff like that. Many of the shows my my punk rock band played at was because of, of Dr. Fever. The um, the lead singer of this band would um, invite us out to play all the time. Very, very awesome. Again, DIY, look at that. It's just a cassette tape with Dr. Fever written on it, and they printed this out themselves. This, I believe, was actually recorded at Creep Records. So this was actually like, again, they paid money to have this recorded, but then they they DIY'd the copies themselves. So pretty awesome. Great, again, great ska band. I really need to digitize this stuff and listen to it again. That's awesome. That is so cool. Uh, Envy for Plaid. This, I believe, was a punk rock band. Don't think it was a ska band. I believe this was a punk rock band that I remember playing with. I, I believe we played at a church. It was a church show. Uh, it wasn't religious. It was just a church show. It was a show at a church that we played at. And I believe um, Envy for Plaid was... Um, the band looks like this is a two song demo. That's it. Side A, side B, one song on each side. And again, they just give out all their information. They're, they're like all the information of uh, where they live and their phone numbers and stuff are on the back here. Um, and their AOL uh, information as well, which is, which is funny. Who remembers AOL? Anyway, that's cool. That's awesome. Again, I believe they were a punk band. I don't think they were Scott. I think they were punk. Cool. Uh, cool logo there on the front. That's awesome. So that's cool. Uh, then we have a band that actually did fairly well for themselves. That is Dark Day Dawning. So sometimes a local punk band would get like, not big, but bigger in the scene, if you will, in the sense that they would play lots of shows. Everybody knew who they were. They were around for a little while. They may have been on like a little independent record label. And I believe they were maybe on an independent record label. I think they were. Um, I'm not entirely sure. But uh, yeah, so, so Dark Day Dawning. I remember they were kind of like a big, sort of like a big deal. For a little while there. Again, still seems kind of like DIY. I think these were still DIY, but I remember for a little while, they were kind of like a big, a big deal in the punk scene. They were kind of known for, uh, for being a little bit more popular than the other punk bands. If you were a band, you're like, oh, I'm playing with Dark Day Dawning. That was a good thing. We've actually played with them. Uh, and the Boils. They were, they were a good, like, sort of local punk band that kind of blew up a little bit. So anyway, very awesome. Dark Day Dawning. I think they were like a punk rock, sort of a little bit hardcore type music, and it's been a long time since I listened to them. If you remember, leave comments down below. So very awesome. Really cool. And then the last two I have to show you here are from my band, The Coffle Fingers. Yes, I know. Weird name, right? I'm trying to think of how that name was invented. I believe we were trying to come up with a name, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have, like, a last name? There were some bands in the area, like the Griswolds and the Bassmasters and um, bands like that. Like, bands that would all have, like, like the, you know, bands like the Ramones. I always liked the whatever. I thought it was really cool. Kind of sound like you're a family. I always thought it was a really cool name for a band. And we were trying to come up with a band name. And I think we came up with, like, all these different names. And somebody said, like, Cobble Cobblepots. Like, you know, from Oswald Cobblepot from um, D.C. And then somewhere, somehow, it transformed from Cobblepot in the Coffle Fingers. Which isn't a name. It's not like we... I think I, I think it was also Heffelfinger. I think my my on my dad's side of the family, there's Heffelfingers. So I think it was kind of like a mixture of Cobblepot and Heffelfinger somehow kind of combined together. And we created the Cobblefingers. Again, it, it nobody knew how to pronounce it. Nobody knew how to write it. It was the worst name to come up with because uh, people would always call us something. This is the... The, the, the Caffel Flinger, like they would always call us the wrong thing or they would, we'd have, um, we'd be playing a show and somebody would make a, a, a um, poster or like a little, you know, a little, not a poster, but a little, um, flyer to hand out and our band name would be spelled wrong on it. People would just, they, they never, it's cough, C-O-U-F, like, <coughs> and then L fingers, cough, cough old fingers. It's not that hard to figure out, right? Anyway, so this was our first, um album. This is a song, or sorry, this is Anarchy in Royersford, which was the town we lived in. I believe this was only, um, oh no, this actually had 21 songs on it. Yeah, this is a 21 song 
album. So pretty awesome. Um, man, I haven't listened to this in so long. I don't even remember half these songs. I gotta listen to this again sometime. A lot of these songs I haven't like even listened to um, until like or s since I recorded this. And again, all all DIY. See that? You just we just printed them out ourselves. Again, giving away my home address at the time and um, our AOL address. And all that stuff back in the day. Um, we also apparently were selling... Um, oh, we, we were selling this album. And um, sheets of stickers for two bucks a piece. These were all two dollars a piece. That's it. All these albums, two bucks a piece. That's how much we charged. And we also had Songs to Hate, which is another song. I actually drew this. It's uh, Underdog. But I mean, I'm punk rock and giving the finger. He was, I believe he was holding a bad guy in the actual original drawing. This is based off a of drawing. But I mean, I'm punk rock. So yeah, this song... This, uh, this ad, um, 16 songs on it. I believe mostly different songs. Looks like maybe one or two songs we re-recorded for this album. But yeah, this was our this was the this was the like our our big our big album. This is like you know, this was around for a little while. We didn't really promote that too much. Then we recorded this one, which had better songs on it. This is the one we always would give out to like people to play shows, or we'd give out just for free, or we'd sell for two bucks uh, to people. So that's awesome. Very cool. So call the fingers. My band, my band from back in the day, my punk rock band. I was a lead singer and guitarist uh, for the band. My friend Colin, he played bass, and my brother actually played the drums. Um, so that's awesome. Colin uh, uh, Colin uh, did backup vocals as well. So really awesome, really cool. Just wanted to show these off. I mean, it was so cool to come across all these old punk rock and ska albums from back in the day. All these local DIY albums. I mean, that was just too awesome. Finding these up in the attic, I was blown away. This is music I haven't listened to in years. Not because I'm not still into this kind of music or still into this band. I'm not one of those people who's like, man, remember that band I used to listen to back in 1990-whatever? I haven't listened to them in years. No, I still listen to all that music. All those bands from the 90s I used to listen to, I still do listen to. The issue with these are I only have cassette tapes of them, and I'm not usually listening to cassette tapes. If I had digital copies of these, if I had a CD, I'd still be listening to these bands on rotation on my iPod all the time. In fact, I do believe I have a Dr. Fever album that they released on CD. I still have it in my collection. That, that is on my iPod. Um, and I believe I have, I, I digitized uh, the Call of Fingers years ago. That's still on my iPod. But the rest of the bands, I haven't digitized. I have to do that. I have to get this music digitally and put it on my iPod so I can listen to, to them and have them in rotation all the time. So great, fantastic music. I haven't listened to in years. Looking forward to re-listening to all these bands. This is so cool. Very, very awesome. Gotta get the Walkman out now. So very awesome, very cool. If you have a bunch of these at your house, leave a comment down below. I was so happy to find these. I was actually just thinking about these the other day. So really cool that I went up there and actually ended up stumbling upon them. They're going to go into my collection. I'm going to put these on a shelf down here. I'm going to catalog them on my, my website and they're going to go, they're going to go next to all my CDs. So very awesome. Very cool. So, all right, guys, that's it. Wanted to share those with you. Some DIY local punk rock for the Philly area and one local, like, I guess, I guess he was from Philly. Um, DJ, <laughs> some hard house DJ uh, album there. That's that's pretty cool as well. So, all right, guys, that's it. Again, if you have something like this in your house, leave comments down below. Want to hear about you and your maybe your days of being in the punk rock scene, a punk rock music. Were you in a punk rock band? And if you uh, just were in the punk rock scene, do you remember buying like DIY cassette tapes from your favorite punk rock bands back in the day? And do you still have those tapes? If you do, leave comments down below. Let me know who those bands are. I'd love to hear from you guys. So, all right, guys, with that, we're done. So, as always, thank you all so much for checking out this video. Be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, check down below for links to Patreon, Spreadshirt, and the Cinema Sickness store. It came from Cinema Sickness. Also, check down below for my second channel, Retro Rest Stop for Daily Adventures. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.